Schokolade. Ja, ich
with the Holy Spirit coming upon me, I told him to try and encourage me. And I, I told him, listen, you you yeah, just some good things when you're really younger. Let's see if you want to fight in the land of So he did. This is what he did. He, he, um, he was in charge of the kitchen. I don't know why, because he, he doesn't know anything about the kitchen. In fact, he got myself and my siblings to, to have a go at being in service. So um, if he didn't like what we cooked, you know, he would throw the missiles to the other side of the room and hit the wall and go, this is not how I'm going to make it again. And um, we'll be quite scared of him. He was a very angry boy. I don't know why. But um, one thing that was very really good with was he never wasted food. He never wasted food. He is in certain blocks, you know, blocks in the prisons, and he was in charge of a particular block. And he was in charge of the kitchen. And he noticed that a lot of the, um, the, the inmates were wasting food. They would just grab their food, they didn't like it, they couldn't finish it, it was He got very angry. He put his foot down and said, no, it's not going to happen anymore. So he, he stood there and he hanged them a little bit at a time. They wanted more, he said, no. And if you wanted to come get some more, then that's what's in the plan. And you come around for seconds. Well, this is what happened. Even though you're on loan, they didn't come back for seconds because they were full. And what happened is they built up a surplus of bread and vegetables and all those sorts of things, and they stored it in their freezer, and there were about four other cells that ran out of food, and they didn't know what to do. And then my brother, he, he told my wife, he said, listen, be, you're in this situation because you didn't look out for yourself, you didn't think ahead and try and plan for when the tough times come. So what he did was, he got his surplus out, and he gave it to all of the cells. And just that little gesture that my mother taught him, he made a name for himself. We're talking about a prison of more than a thousand people within the facility. The day he left, every single cell rejected him. They really shifted him, they respected him and love this guy because they they were shown a love that they never received outside of those walls. And during that time, I'll tell you the story because he wrote a particular song and it's called, um, it's called Walking on Water. And uh, he sang it to me and I thought it was fantastic. I, I love the lyrics. And so what I did was I stole this song and then I made it my own. Um, because if not, I will bring it no, I won't. Remember, I will, um, what we've done is, is a celebrate. We've done a couple of songs. And um, this is one of them. My brother gave us the chorus. We decided to write the rest. And it's all about walking on water and keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus today. Do not be sorry. Amen. Do not be sorry. Um, I understand that they got our video clip ready. You see this video clip while I get ready. Okay? What's this guy? Amazing Father.
once you realize how powerful God is, you will know that you can conquer those things within the church. This new deal was rejected by many companies that thought he was a big loser. Now he's considered to be the greatest film director of all time, Steven Spielberg, who has seen many of his movies. Albert Einstein, okay? He wasn't a very intelligent boy, so they thought, that, but he came over on top and proved everyone wrong by winning the Nobel Prize of Physics. This guy amazed me because he wrote five of the greatest world symphonies, but he was completely deaf. Couldn't hear a sound. Oh, sorry. <coughs> He was bankrupt several times and he was rejected. I don't know how to say it. Is it, is it Anna Hay or Anna Hay? Potato, potato, So his company is worth billions today. I love this guy. God bless you. But um, Fred Sanders, we all familiar with um, Curtis guys. Now, he wasn't very wealthy. He took a look at Social Security took up $105 and began selling chicken. Now it's worth, I don't know, I can't, can't put a number on it, but it's quite famous. So if you don't know this guy, you know, you're not from this guy. This guy is amazing. You know, he has this, um, this motto in his office, and it says, it, it says, succeed harder, but fail harder. And that's his motto. Because he's failed so many times and he's overcome so many big things. Um, look at him, I won't get into the details of it. But he, he um, this guy's a legend in high school. And he's no Have you heard of uh, Rohan Murphy? Can we get that clip up and running? No? That's fine. You can't see. But he, he's a very progressive, he's quite strong. He has no legs. Yes, he has no legs. And he takes on guys that have got all their limbs and guys that are twice his size or his length has got no legs. And um, he's, he's one of the type of he's, he's in a, a very amazing part. Awesome guy. God chooses to save some evidence from the Bible. Abraham was a liar, Jacob was a schemer, Moses was a murderer with a speech impediment. David, an adulterer and murderer, and Samson broke his covenant with God. Jonah was unforgiving and angry, and Elijah was a coward. Plus, the twelve disciples were fishermen and tax collectors and people that were not liked by the society. All of you fit in, in some of these descriptions, whether you like it or not. And God is definitely choosing you. King David started a servant. Then he became a military commander, and then he became the king of the Israelites. But it wasn't an easy task. He had to endure quite a few things before he got there. The middle son Peter was confused, cowardly, without understanding. He doubted. Some of it sounds like some of you. I don't know if you go back. And I, I, I mean that. And you should be proud of that in a way. But don't be proud of it because you say that way. Be proud of it because God's going to choose you and fix whatever it is that you need to fix. And he will. He'll fix you one day and you'll finally realize that all of this rubbish that I'm, I'm reading out now that was worth going through. After Jesus died and he resurrected his head, that's when Peter finally realized why Jesus chose him. One of the most amazing things that I've read in, in the Bible, in one day, in one day, he went out and lost, he, he, he spread the gospel like everyone, he was talking about Jesus, and in one day he baptized how many? 3,000. 3,000. I've the most I've seen is 50 in a day. I've heard about maybe 200. But to 3,000 in one day, he wouldn't have done that on his own. God was by his side in the second world. So what are you waiting for? You can do great things like that. The only thing you need to do 
Now we've lost the signal, but that's okay. Because I've got something else for you. No, I haven't. I'm <laughs> very <laughs> Just as I was about to 
I can. My name was passed to see. Blah, 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 blah. Say you see. So with my last ounce of energy and strength, I see those exact words. Two words. Yes, Lord. Mm. Wait, gone. Just like that. Amen. Gone. I still don't know what happened to me that day, but if that's the power, power of Jesus to, to give me that relief, and to let me know that with two words that he can help me through a different time, then I'm going to follow that man. I'm going to follow him all the way. You need to make the same decision as well. It's sorry that I keep clicking my fingers. Some of you have been in this, but every time I do this, you kind of wake up a bit. But you need to wake up today. These are decisions that you can't take lightly. You can't walk out those doors and go, well, that was a nice thing. Oh, I enjoyed the praise and worship. How those people are nice to get it together. You've really got to make this thing today. And I'm talking to every one of you. And it's not me that's telling you. It's God that's telling you. And if you've taken, if you've taken nothing from what you've done today, I want you to take these two words with you as you walk out. Yes. myself, man, it's echoing. <laughs> How gracious he's been in each and every one of our lives. You know the song that I'm about to sing, that we're about to sing? It's an old song, you know, sung by the Heritage. It's the first time I heard it. And um, we have someone in our lives that think they are all that that they don't need Jesus. And I'm sure that should every one of us have come across that person at one stage in our lives. But in Hebrews 13 verse 5 it says, God has said, never will I leave you. In every walk that we take, whether it be good or whether it be wrong, just remember that he's right there. He's not going to leave you. And this song says it. I'm going to share this with you. Things went going as well as he 